Today was the first day of Outlaws of Thunder Junction spoilers, and I, like most people, thought today was going to be a kind of normal first day of spoilers where you get a handful of cards, and maybe some of them are interesting and maybe they aren't. Instead, we got like 40 cards, and like a ton of them are modern playable. It almost feels like Thunder Outlaws of Thunder Junction is like Modern Horizons 3 Overflow <laughs> with how like exciting these cards are and how like specifically pushed for modern they are. Um, I'm so excited and there's just like so much to talk about. I figured why don't I just go ahead and do like a shorter spoiler review, kind of a bare bones spoiler review of all the cards that were spoiled today that I think are interesting. So we have Magic's third ever two mana planeswalker, Jace Reawakened, who looks like he's kind of fused with Ashiok or, or something, um, with a very interesting first line of text. You cannot cast the spell during your first, second, or third turns of the game. Um, let's just forget that for a moment, but the, the actual abilities on the Jace are, uh, and there's a three loyalty, plus one, draw a card, discard a card, plus one, you may exile a non-land non -land card with mana value three or less from your hand. If you do, it becomes plotted. Plotted is also a new mechanic that was spoiled today. How plotted works is you exile a card face up, and on any turn after the turn you plot it, you can play it at sorcery speed without paying its mana cost. So not the turn you plot it, but the following turn. And you cannot cast it at instant speed via any means like Leyline of Anticipation or Teferi Time Raveler. And the minus six ability, an ultimate, I guess not super fast if you don't cheat it into play early, uh, but the ultimate is until end of turn, whenever you cast a spell, copy it, you may choose new targets for the copy. This will work for permanent spells like other copies of Jays, Teferi, whatever, whatever your permanent spells are. Um, but this first line of text, you cannot cast a spell during your first, second, or third turns of the game. So there is a way to get around this. The way to get around Jace's uh, restriction and to cast it on turn two um, or turn one if you have gemstone caverns, I guess, is Leyland of Anticipation. Jace says you can't cast a spell during your first, second, or third turns, but it doesn't say anything about your opponent. So if you have Leyland of Anticipation in play or I guess some other way to give it flash, you can cast it on your opponent's turn. Now, what can you do with this Jace? You can use it as a looting machine. You can use it as a way to make mana by uh, plotting some cards, but you can do something kind of broken with it. You can cast Tybalt Cosmic Imposter uh, off the plot. You have to spend the turn plotting, <laughs> and then the following turn, you get to cast a Tybalt Cosmic Imposter. I think that this is pretty exciting, where even if you don't go like Leyline of Anticipation, Flash and Jace, Untap, Plot the Tybalt, uh, which, which th that does sound really powerful to be able to do. It's going to be kind of slow, right? Because you're going to go land, land, after you put your Leyline of Anticipation into play, cast your Jace, untap, have to have Tybalt in hand, plot the Tybalt, then untap, then you cast Tybalt for free and you're way ahead. And it's kind of cool that you get to do whatever you want with your man on turn three. That's kind of cool. Um, but I, I like that on turn four, you can just go like, resolve your Profane Tutor that you put on Suspend, grab Jace Reawaken, cast Jace, opponent tries to counter, you just counter their counter, plot a Tybalt, you're super ahead, <laughs> kind of can't lose. Uh, or, and even just like on turn four in a control deck going, I'm going to cast Jace Reawakened with a removal spell, with a counter spell. I'm just going to like super effective double spell on turn four. That's what Jace does. It's like my turn four is going to be super duper uh, effective and powerful, but I won't be able to go off until turn four. It's also cool that Jace pitches the subtlety and force negation. So you can kind of just play multiples and still have a use for it early. I think, I think Jace is like really exciting. Just does a lot. Very powerful for two mana has a significant downside that you can get around with Leyline, and it also just being like a pretty good two mana planeswalker has this potential to cheat in Tybalt Cosmic Impostor. Lots of lots of potential with Jace Reawakened. I expect initially to be playing a lot of it in Modern and Pioneer, and uh, I expect it to be at least somewhat playable. We also have Satoro the Infiltrator, which is unironically being compared to Up the Beanstalk, <laughs> and it makes like a surprising amount of sense, which is funny. This is a two mana, two, three menace, Whenever this card or another uh, non-token creatures entered the battlefield under your control, if the card wasn't cast or if no, spin, no mana was spent to cast it, you get to draw a card. This means if you cascade into Satoro off of Charlotte's Agent, it gets to enter and then draw a card. If you evoke an incarnation like Grief or Solitude or Subtlety, you get to draw a card. If you have a Bloodgast in your graveyard, and you return it to Satoro, and you sack it to a Karen feeder, you get to draw a card, then crack a fetch land, return it to play, draw another card. If you Aether Vial in Satoro, you get to draw a card, and then every time you activate Aether Vial after that, you get to draw a card. If you Ephemerate Satoro or another creature, 
you get to draw a card. Uh, if Ephemerate rebounds, you also get to draw a card if Satoru is still in play. Um, though I had a very smart uh, chatter in my chat today saying this card would slot really well into the existing Gorios deck, which I, which I actually agree after some, some thought. Because this will draw a card off of Evoking Grief, Evoking Solitude, off of Ephemerating, and also off of casting Gorios Vengeance. And you can also occasionally... Go you can Gorios Satoru and then Ephemerate it. You get to draw like three cards off of that. That's probably surprisingly pretty good. I, the, like it, It's also a human ninja rogue. Uh, literally three somewhat relevant creature types. Uh, not the most relevant, but... This card rules. It just like it just works with so many good existing cards in modern, and this is this is always what you're looking for when you're looking for a new card to come into modern. You want a card that is good that works with the other good cards in the format. Maybe that's kind of obvious, but um, always always be thinking about that. You want something that will work with existing new cards rather than like forcing you to play a bunch of underwhelming cards to maximize its power. But I think this card will will see a good amount of modern play. Got three toughness too. Let's go. We also have a new Magda card, Magda the Horde Master. This is a 2 minute 2-2 two -two that says whenever you commit a crime, create a tapped treasure token. This only triggers once each turn, and but it does trigger on your opponent's turn too. You might be wondering, how do you commit a crime? To commit a crime, you can target your opponent, any permanent they control, or any card in their graveyard, Pretty, which is pretty simple. Um, you can also use Magda to sacrifice three treasures, which is a lot less than the five treasures you used to have to sacrifice for the other Magda to make a 4-4 dragon flying with haste. And you can only activate that as a sorcery. What's really cool about this Magda too, kind of compared to the old one, is you don't have to put like gigantic dumb artifacts and dragons in your deck. You just, you just get, the dragons are like built into Magda, which was always kind of an issue building around this card is you just have, so, you have a couple clunkers in there that are like Magda tutor targets. Also, sacrificing five tokens is so many. Three is <laughs> three is pretty doable. I've been like unironically registering enterprise, enterprising scallywag in some modern decks and really liking it. This is at the beginning of your instep. If you've descended, make a treasure token. I think Magda is better than this, although this triggers off fetch lands and stuff. Um, this can trigger two turns and is also the payoff. It's also legendary, and you're also just going to kind of want to play both of these in the same deck, which is which is kind of fun. Um, but Magda, you could the best way to commit a crime is Mishra's Bobble. Mishra's Bobble just enables everything in modern. Uh, but Mishra's Bobble does target your opponent. You can go like Bobble, Magda, crack it, uh, commit a crime. Sometimes you'll have two Bobbles and you'll just go commit a crime on my turn, commit a crime on your turn. Two mana, two, two, make two treasures, untap. One more crime, you make a dragon. You can also go like turn one relic, turn one relic, tap, commit a crime, uh, t <laughs> Bobble, commit a crime on your turn, relic on their turn. You can, you can commit a lot of crimes. If you have two relics, a crime on your turn crime on your opponent's turn really easy to do also this ability here is an as a good activated ability for agatha's soul cauldron so i've been working on some like mono red agatha's soul cauldron scallywag goblet engineer um crime novelist decks lately and i think magda likely slots right in there i'm i'm, I'm really excited about this one we will definitely be cooking a lot with it and i think i think she looks super good and as if all that wasn't enough they also just decided to print very casually the best two mana prowess creature ever printed. It doesn't actually have the word prowess on it, but Slick Shot Show Off is a two mana flying haste bird wizard, a wizard very relevant creature type in these colors. Uh, whenever you cast a non creature spell, it gets plus two plus O oh until end of turn, so kind of just better prowess. And you can also plot it for two mana, which I really, really like on this card. It's like a super upgraded sprite dragon slash kiln fiend, <laughs> which is wild because I've played a lot of both of those cards. Um, but the like, what I love about the plot on Slick Shot Show Off is a lot of times you're going to play a creature on turn two in your prowess deck, but it's so obvious your opponent is just holding up a removal spell. So instead of just playing into your opponent's removal spell and letting them use mana for the upside of just hitting them for one, you can plot on turn two, and then you maybe you'll cast it next turn. Maybe they're holding up removal. Are they still holding up removal? Maybe you cast an expressive iteration that turn. Maybe you, you wait another turn. You really just get to like... Tax that mana and wait till you have like protection or value to like really get them with the show off. And you are going to be able to kill very quickly with this card in the Underworld Breach Mutagenic Growth format. Um, this card is just going to be in every prowess, <laughs> every prowess deck until end of time. And also, maybe you play it in some wizard shell. Also, like with Flame of Anor, um, if you want to guarantee that you'll have a wizard on turn three for Flame of Anor, like like you know, one issue is you play a wizard on turn two. 
your opponent kills it. Oh no, your Flame of Anor isn't two modes on turn three. You can plot, then turn three, cast it two modes Flame of Anor, which is really exciting. This card, this card rules. It is just uh, de facto best in slot at two mana. I'm also excited for this card, Insatiable Avarice. This is the first uh, card with Spree we're talking about today. Uh, Spree is very similar to Multi Kicker, but instead of being stapled onto like a mediocre uh creature that's below raid and slow and just like never makes it and constructed they, they get away with that and it's just multi-kicker uh onto nothing so for black mana this is a sorcery that does nothing uh but for two additional black mana target player draws three cards and loses through life this is pretty interesting by itself in a format where mono black decks both coffers and non-coffers are doing well and are pretty good when these decks play usually a lot of copies of Orcish Bowmasters and or Shielder the Apocalypse, uh, where this card ends up turning into like a big life gain spell with Shielder the Apocalypse and can also just win games out of nowhere. If you have a Bowmaster, two Bowmasters, Shielder Bowmasters in play, you're going to deal crazy damage if you just target your opponent. In addition, you can spend two extra mana to search your library for a card, then shuffle, then put it on top. I, I doubt that you are going to be almost ever three mana, sort of three mana imperial sealing yourself um in any constructed format but in a cabal coffers deck you're going to just be doing both modes a lot of time you're going to top deck this and do both modes a lot of the time it's nice upside on the card um you know I, it's been a while since i've registered painful truths but like the fact that this is a mono black card i think is a big upgrade to painful truths in addition to working with bowmaster shielded in addition to having the um imperial seal mode on the card i think i think this card is likely going to be somewhat playable we also have a kind of weird dress down spree card that I think will, I think this card will be more of like a pioneer standard card than a modern card, although I, I do expect to see a little bit of modern play. Um, so again, spree, one mana, do nothing. For one extra mana, all creatures lose all abilities till end of turn. Now this, this effect is a little bit worse than dress down as we figured out talking on stream today, where you can't respond to an enter the battlefield ability and stop that trigger from entering. And you can't stop like a walking ballista from entering with any counters at all because it only affects creatures that are currently in play. So this still kills all like Urza Saga tokens and, and stuff, but, but it, it is not as good of an effect as dress down. It also doesn't draw a card. So it is also a white card though. So like if you don't want to play blue and you want this kind of effect, it's an interesting option, but also because of its versatility where it allows you to give a creature indestructible until end of turn. And for, for six mana, a base six mana, you can destroy all creatures at instant speed, um, which I think is a new record for instant speed wraths. I think route is five mana, destroy all creatures, seven mana, instant speed. This is six mana, instant speed, destroy all creatures. And then four, maybe, maybe seven mana. You're going to give something you control indestructible. And then maybe for eight mana, you're going to, um, stop your opponent from having like a, a dies ability on the final showdown. And it's cool that it's like this big kind of game winning instant speed sweeper that is also uh, possibly castable for cheaper. Will it, will it see a lot of modern play? Probably not, but I think this is, I think it'll be a very cool card for standard, very cool card for pioneer. Usually when I do these like spoiler review videos, um, I'll include some one mana artifacts that I think may maybe I'll put these in my Urza Saga decks one day. And, and a lot of times I don't, sometimes we do. This one is actually staple for Urza Saga decks. If you are an aggro deck, you have Urza Saga, you have one of these in your deck, just kind of period. Um, Molten Spiked Boots, uh, which is an equipment, one mana, uh, so it's Tutor Rule Saga. Equipped creature gets plus one plus O and has haste and ward one. Uh, and it only equips for one mana. And so just the ability to go like Saga turn two. Make a token at the end of your opponent's turn. Untap. Make a token. Play a land. Get the boots with the saga. Equip the boots to the new token. Crash in for like seven, eight, nine, ten. Is going to be a really strong play pattern. Um, if you're playing like Affinity and you have Nettle Cyst, you get to like haste your germ token. This card rules. It is a modern staple only because of Urza Saga existing. But mm, it is it is going to be so nice. There's also just like a couple of sick multicolor three drops that really like kind of go <laughs> under the radar here, but there's Ruthless Lawbringer. Enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice another creature. When you do destroy another non-land permanent, it's a vampire assassin. Assassin's a pretty relevant creature type with Assassin's Creed coming up. Vampire's not too bad either. I know this card is sick. It's gonna be super fringe playable, like a creature style deck, but you can ephemerate it. I don't know. I, I like this card a lot. 
There's also Honest Rustine, Rustine, who's a green black human warlock 3 2. Enters the battlefield, return, target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. It makes creature spells you cost cost one less to cast. The big test is like, is Yogmoth going to play one copy of this? Probably not, but I don't know. Like, it's like an eternal witness only for creatures that also like reduce the cast casting cost of your stuff. I don't know. I like I like both these cards. I think these cards are sick. Very fringe playable. I want to talk about them because I think they went a little under the radar today. But there there are a lot of cards spoiled. I I feel somewhat confidently I did not talk about every single one that has like implications in modern. But this was the first day of spoilers, so I just I really wanted to get kind of ahead of the curve, talk about some of this stuff. I'm still planning on doing a longer spoiler video for the set when it comes out. I'll likely be maybe expanding upon the cards I talked about here. Uh, enhancing these slides a little bit, making it look nicer, but just wanted to get this out today. I was so excited. I want to talk about it. Thank you for watching. I'll be live over on twitch.tv slash aspiring spike tomorrow. Goodbye.